Hello and welcome to the Philippines. Bahol, Jewel of the Philippines, as it's often referred to. Uh, many of you know that I took a week, about seven days, and went over from Cebu City on a ferry, rented a motorbike, and uh, spent uh, a week traveling around Bahol. Went around the outside of the island, and a little later on I'll pull up a map and uh, just kind of... Uh, review some of the places that we stopped at and uh, some of my thoughts about the different areas. Uh, here we are coming in from the north from, or we're coming in from the north back towards Tagbalaran City, the capital of Bahol. And uh, we had spent some time on, uh, on uh, in Tubagon, up north of here, and we're just coming in here. And I was surprised at the how large the metropolitan area was coming in to uh, Tagbalaran City. Uh, the city itself has a population of about 106,000 people. And the, the whole uh, itself has a population of about 1.4 million people. Now, Bahol is the 10th largest island in the Philippines, something I didn't know. And uh, it has the main island and it has uh, about 75 minor islands around it. Panglao Island, which is a big tourist area, uh, just to the south of uh, uh, Tagbalaran City is the second largest island. Panglao Island is where the new airport is uh, over here on Bahol and uh, making it very easy for tourists to, to get into that area and it will affect the uh, the transportation uh, you, there are also many uh, ferry companies that come into many of the different ports and piers here on the whole island and i covered some of those in my uh, previous videos Bahol seems to be very popular with uh, expats planning to move here and retire here. I was a little bit surprised how many people uh, commented and, and stated, yeah, they had planned on moving to Bahol and they were appreciated the videos I was doing. Anyway, like so many cities uh, driving in Tagblaren or other towns, uh, there are few or almost no traffic lights or stop signs so you come to an intersection and uh, it, <laughs> it works you you look and you go or you go and you you look whichever and uh, gets a little tricky uh, Tagbalaran city has a number of one-way streets which became a little bit confusing when we first rented the the motorbike start driving around uh, you can't take a left on that where you want to take left, so you have to make make several right-hand turns or go further down, make left-hand turns, get back to where you want to be. Tag Balaran City has several small malls. They don't have any malls like Ayala and the big SM malls, the big Robinson malls, but uh, their malls are quite sufficient. Uh, I think the largest mall is out on the outskirts of town uh, called Island Island Mall, something like that. And that's also where the, uh, the bus station is out there. And keep in mind that those things can change. Uh, jeepney stations, bus stations can change over time. Uh, so before you run out someplace looking for a bus, be sure to ask the locals where the bus station is. I think a couple years ago for me to take a tricycle from the bus station out on the outskirts of town into this downtown area, I believe it cost me 30 pesos, about 60 U.S. cents, so that seemed pretty fair to me. When we hired uh, tricycles here in Tegblern City, it seemed like it was always 20 pesos, uh, and I think there's a minimum charge, and I don't know if it's 20 pesos uh, per ride or 10 pesos a piece per person. It was two of us. And, uh, but anyway, pretty cheap to travel by these tricycles and uh, didn't see, saw very few cabs. There are some taxis that sit out by the ferry station and they're looking the, for the passengers that want to go the about 20 
kilometers or so out to Panglao Island, out to Alona Beach area, out to the resorts out there. That's where they make their most money. Uh, when you come in on a ferry, you will also be inundated. There are lots of people standing around with signs. You can sign up for tours. You can rent a car. You can rent a van. And uh, they have their prices posted right there. And you might be able to ne negotiate a little bit, uh, depending upon the time of day. And uh, it's kind of a supply and demand kind of thing sometimes. A couple of years ago, me and a friend went out to Pangalau Island. We ended up renting a a car to bring us back in. We could have got a tricycle for a lot less, but the car was air-conditioned, uh, mo much more comfortable. We had luggage with us to bring us back to the ferry station, and I think it was uh, 400 pesos apiece, and uh, I wasn't going to haggle over that. That's uh, $8 to take us over probably 25 kilometers. I kind of like Tag Blaren City. I've had uh, three trips there, walked around the city a little bit. Uh, it's got a McDonald's. Uh, other than that, uh, you might be a little pressed trying to find Western foods, but uh, keep one thing in mind. Uh, uh, those of us, and I think 80%, 90% of my viewers are Westerners from Aust Australia, New Zealand, U.S., Canada and uh, the European countries. Uh, but keep in mind, we are the minority tourist here. We are the minority. Uh, Koreans, Japanese, Chinese are the biggest tourists here. Uh, so it's not a surprise that you might have, a tr have trouble finding your Western uh, type restaurants in some of these places, especially the smaller cities and towns. Uh, like Tag Balaran, it's got uh, a number of hospitals. Uh, anything real serious, you're probably going to end up going back to Cebu City hospitals or even up to Manila for that. One thing I did not appreciate, though, there are a couple of tricycle drivers who have invested in uh, high-volume speakers, and they're blasting some some terrible noise out of their tricycles as they drive around town and I don't know if they're trying to uh, trying to scare people away with that annoy people who are riding with them maybe maybe all their passengers uh, have uh, are very hard of hearing so they need to turn that up very loud but uh, I was woken up a number of times in a, a GV hotel I stayed in a couple years ago and uh, what in the heck are they having a fiesta outside my window and here's a tricycle driver driving by, stopping to pick people up. It's bad enough to do that during the daytime, uh, but really, do you have to do it in the evening also? There are a number of places that will rent you a motorbike or car, or you can rent a van and, and a driver as well, and, and a car and driver. Uh, I think we paid uh, about 400 pesos a day to rent a motorbike about eight US dollars a day. And I've had other guys tell me, oh, you can get that for 200 pesos a day. You know, 300 pesos. Probably can certain places, but it uh, wasn't, wasn't a big deal to me. And here is one of the medical centers in town, Allied, I believe. Looks like a pretty new building there. Many people who come to the Philippines are coming here to find a girlfriend, to find a wife. And uh, many people will tell you in the city, the taxi drivers, the hobble hobble, uh, motorbike uh, taxi drivers, uh, many people tell you, sir, you have to go to the province to find a good girl. City girls have been, uh, they have been citified, they've been westernized, they want things, they're more expensive. And uh, Many people come to a place like Bohol. The, the term province, every place is in a province. It's like states in the US. Every place is in a province, but the term province usually means outside of the big city. And Bohol and Tag Balaran City are outside of the big city. Generally, the, the people are a little more conservative.
But don't ask me where we're going because I didn't understand any of it. <laughs> the people speak Visaya, which is spoken in many parts of the, the Visayas, uh, but not all parts. Um, and well, they also speak the Filipino, road, of course, Tagalog, and uh, English to varying degrees, depending upon where you're at. at. You know, if they use English uh, occasionally, they're much more accustomed to uh, con communicating with English language. If they don't use it, they may understand what you're saying, but they're not comfortable in replying in English. That's what uh, I find. But it's usually not too difficult to find uh, somebody who understands English and you can you take care of uh, any issues that way. Uh, sometimes it can be a little different type of English, so uh, you may have to explain something a couple different times or ask the question in, in a different way uh, to be sure that you understand the answer. What does it cost to live on Bohol? Well, it depends on what part of Bohol you're going to be in. depends upon uh, what your requirements are. There are no high-rise condominiums over here. Uh, did not see any of that type of thing or... I'm not aware of any of that type of thing being built. Uh, I suspect in time it will happen, but uh, many of the smaller towns and cities don't have those types of accommodations. So you're looking at apartments, you're looking at uh, smaller condominiums, you're looking at housing uh, subdivisions, uh, different rental options there. Uh, you might find a hotel that will give you a pretty decent uh, long-term uh, rental agreement just have to ask. Some do, some don't. I know several people who live on uh, other islands, smaller islands than Cebu, who come to Cebu City one time or two times a month, go to places like SNR, Landers, the larger malls uh, to get items they can't find on their, their smaller uh, islands and in the smaller towns. And it gives them a break from that area as well. It's pretty easy to do and pretty cheap for about 500 pesos, about $10. You can get a two-hour ferry ride back over to Cebu City out of Tag Balearn. Uh, as I said, other cities have uh, ports and piers with ferries going out also. Tag Balearn City has lots of pension houses and hotels up and down many of the streets. Uh, this one, Slim Pension House. Not sure if the rooms are extra small for slim people only. I will set up a playlist on my channel uh, just for Bohol as well. I've had, uh, this is my third trip over here in three and a half years, and I've got enough videos where I will make a playlist just dedicated to Bohol, information about Bohol. And I have, as many of you know, I have uh, done tours around a number of the smaller towns and uh, showed off some resorts and pension houses, hotels, to give people an idea of the prices and where you can stay in different areas. Just for your information, Alona Beach, the very popular area on the far side of Panglao Island, uh, is a, a destination for many people. And uh, I've been told by a number of people that uh, 300 pesos, $6, to go that about 22, 23 kilometers out there is the going rate. Uh, what I found in a previous visit is that they will uh, often drop that down to about 200 pesos, four U.S. dollars. But, you know, th uh, that's quite a ways out there. And a lot of times these guys are coming all the way back empty. I don't mind paying 300 pesos for that. But I don't want to get gouged either if somebody tries to overcharge me. All right, using Google Maps again. Uh, we're going to zero in on Bohol. Bohol, right here, the 10th largest island in the Philippines. Got Cebu Island here, Cebu City across over here, uh, Dumaguete down here, Negros Island, you got Panay Island. Uh, so this is the Visayas. You have Leyte over here. Uh, you can take ferries from Bohol uh, down to uh, the Mindanao area, Cagayan de Oro. I think you can, I think they have a ferry going over to this area and probably over to the, some little place over here. Uh, you can take ferries over here to Leyte uh, from Bohol, uh, the, some of the different ports, and they have ports and piers around the different islands. I'll talk a little bit more about that. And, of course, you have Manila up here. 
So let's zoom in there a little bit. And thought I had this figured out so it would center there, but I guess not. So there's Bahol Island. And uh, we, we took a ferry about two hours, a little less than two hours from Cebu City. 500 pesos a person. Come over here to Tag Blaren City. And uh, we rented a motorbike for seven days. Uh, that trip with 500 pesos, 10 U.S. dollars. Now, I understand now there is a, uh, I think there's a ferry that comes over from Argao over on Cebu over here uh, to the Loon area also. And you can catch a ferry out of uh, Cebu City, a small banca boat that will take you over to Hatafi. And I think Teleban here probably has ferries going to Cebu City as well. Anyway, uh, this is Pangalao Island, the second largest city in Bahol, and this is a big diving area, this whole area out here. Uh, lots of dive shops, lots of dive resorts, other resorts as well, so you can hang out there if you want, uh, want a nice beach there. And uh, like I said, I will be putting a playlist up for Bahol. I've been out here uh, on two other trips. This is my third trip, so I've got quite a few videos of Bahol this trip. I wanted to go around the outside of Bahol as close to the sea as possible and uh, just to see what we would find out here. And so we took this, this road on out along the coast. And what you find up through the interior up here, you get the chocolate hills up in the interior. Uh, the interior I've read is usually a little bit cooler than the coastline, which is a little surprising, but uh, that's what I read. And you find the uh, Tarsiers, one of the smallest primates in the world, up, up in uh, this area. I think there are two different uh, areas where the Tarsiers hang out in. So the first night we went all the way up to Hagna up here and we stayed in a hotel there and I've done uh, a couple of videos about Hagna and I will include that in my videos for Bahol. And the second year we continued on up. Our goal for the next day was to get to Anda and we came up here and instead of going on this way there is a smaller road that cuts off there and we took this road around to the city of Onda here, and we stayed in a hotel there. And I've done a number of uh, videos about resorts there. And I have additional uh, videos of a couple other resorts I will be putting up in the future. Um, anyway, this is a white sand beach. Uh, some people call it the Boracay, uh, the hidden gem, uh, the beach. Uh, they need to clean it up a little bit. And over time, they will draw more and more uh, tourists into that area if they clean the beach up a bit. And uh, But a nice area, nice relaxing area. And uh, instead of going back this way, and I wasn't sure what kind of road we would run into, but we continued on on this road. And uh, as we got up in these, these areas, got a little rough uh, driving up there, the secondary roads, but... Uh, it worked out well, and uh, we stopped at a place up here, Lamanock Island, and uh, very uh, historical area, lots of caves. They have some prehistoric uh, cave paintings up there, and I've done a video about that as well. I think it cost, uh, was it 600 pesos to get in? Not very much at all, $12. And then we... Uh, you know, as you zoom in on these maps, there are different things that come up. Like here's a hidden beach resort here. And you say, well, gee, I don't see any roads. How do you get there? Well, you ask the locals. You ask the locals, and there will be a road someplace. There will be a way to get there. Or you can hire a banca boat, a pump boat, to take you there from uh, maybe from here. Maybe you have to take a, a boat to get there. But I'm pretty sure I saw on another map there is a narrow little road that goes out in that area. So we visited there. It took, uh, I think, two, two and a half hours to go there. And then uh, we continued along the coast up here. 
uh, pretty much as close as we well we came over here we ended up coming out over here to Kandu High I believe is how you pronounce it and uh, we did not my intention was to go back and stay along the coast just to see what we would find back there but we did not do that maybe the next trip uh, take some extra time but we went up here and our next goal was to get to Ubai and uh, this is Ubai port here in the city of Ubai here this is the province of Ubai and we stayed overnight there I did a video of uh, a couple of, of a pension house a couple hotels there and of the town as well my, my friend grew up there until she was 18 years old hadn't been back since then and uh, it's it's surprising. She told me she had never been to Tag Blaren City until our trip, um, and that's what I find with many Filip Filipinos is that you know, they grow up in an area and they hardly ever go out of that area. I I knew a person from uh, over near Mole Bowl, uh, town over that direction, up in the uh, way up lived way up in the mountains. They would come down. Uh, Barilli was the name of the town. They would come down to the town, which is within a kilometer of the ocean. They'd never seen the ocean. They come to town, do their business, go back up in the mountains. Had never been to the mountains. Had never been to the uh, waterfalls. That was very near that area too, just outside of town. Uh, so many people are are not well traveled in the Philippines, and they. They don't know much out of their own area, uh, so that's kind of a kind of surprise. But anyway, after a day in Ubai, and they have a pretty big port there as well, over here through the Trinidad area, and uh, up here, Taliban is, seems to be a popular place with uh, many expats living in this area. And uh, a couple of years ago, I did uh, was there for a couple of days. I did a video there, and I will include that in the videos about Bohol on my playlist. Uh, we just went through that area. Hatafi, there is a uh, is a town we did not stop in. We went through that area, and you can catch a banca boat. They they have these uh, pump boats that run several times a day from here over to Cebu City as well. Uh, so you can take that trip. And uh, I think it was less than 200 pesos when I took it a couple of years ago. Much smaller ferry than the larger ferries. And there's Cebu City over there. And it was uh, an hour and a half, perhaps even less than that, to get across there in the smaller and this is Mac Tan or Air, uh, Airport over here, of course. And I'll show you where the new airport is on Pangalao Island as we go back in here. Our next stop down here was down in uh, Tubagon, the town of Tubagon here, and did a video about that. Uh, Claren is a rather popular area, it seems. Uh, there you can find a number of resorts on these other islands, and you just have to ask about them. Kalapi down here, and uh, the big island of Bohol, then I think you have 75 other islands around that are included in the Bohol province. Panganan Island, uh, that's a video I did about going out here, uh, out here across the bridge, the causeway out here, and all the way around here. I've done a couple videos out there. Treasure Island all the way out here number of other resorts, different places, dive resort over in this area. I just had a video up there. And I wanted to stay in a resort in this area before we got back to Tegblaren City, but uh, they didn't have any water out here at Treasure Island Resort for about a month or so because of the drought. We come back in here to this dive resort, look very promising. They were booked for the night, uh, so that wasn't an option. Uh, so we continued on our way. Uh, did not go out on this island. That would have been an interesting trip. I think there are one or more resorts there. I think you probably have resorts over here. 
Loon, you're getting very close to Tag Blur and City. It seemed to be a uh, very popular area. And then we continued on back to Tag Blur and City down here. And this downtown area. You have two causeways. Um, originally, in, in uh, way back ancient history, I think this area, Lower Town, used to be the main port area here until these causeways were built. And then the, uh, the pier at this time is, here's the pier now, I guess, pier that goes off here over here. This is the pier. And uh, Pangalau Island uh, is a big tourist destination. And this is the new Pangalau International Airport over here. And I just read a uh, report that they are getting more and more international flights coming in here. More and more airlines are bringing in tourists. China, Korea, uh, there's another Philippine airline, uh, Philippine Air that uh, and Cebu Pacific both go into that airport, I believe, and there's a, no, a new airline that's just started up that is going to start running out of Clark, going into there and also offering uh, flights to different places as well as charter flights. And there are a number of beaches along the coast of Pangalau Island. Alona Beach is a real popular area. Um, and a big, uh, big dive area as well. And lots of resorts, lots of resorts in this area and other resorts as you go around. People ask me, is this airport open? Yes, it is open. You can fly in there now. There is a cave, at least one cave uh, over in this area, I believe. And on a previous trip, I paid a tricycle driver for the day to take me around. We stopped at a couple different beaches and Alona Beach and then we went back down this road, I believe, to some cave back in here. Here's here's another cave. I'm not sure that's, I don't think uh, that's the cave we have. I think that may have been the cave we went to, but I don't think it's located there. I think it's back over in this area. I think anybody is allowed to put markers on these maps. Anyway, I'll hit this other, get a different perspective. Bohol and the Philippines are not desert, so <laughs> that clean map uh, lets you see things clearer than if you uh, pull up all the, the actual, the growth. You get a lot of, a lot of green. Uh, it's in a very humid uh, tropics, very close to the equator, so of course you get a lot of green, a lot of vegetation. Gives you a little better idea of, of the mountains and the terrain. So there you have a quick look at uh, Bahol, along with my other videos I've done. And uh, the, the area around Bahol, a little bit about the transportation. And uh, I could live there. I could live there. I would have to take one or two trips a month back to Cebu City to get some of the things that I would want there. And uh, just for a break... Uh, many of you prefer more of the rural life. That's what you're looking for, a quiet rural provincial life. And uh, those opportunities are there. How much will it cost you to live there? There again, you just have to go to get out and start exploring. Uh, I advise that you find a Filipino that you trust to help you find and negotiate uh, so that you aren't hit with the uh, foreigner price. I've gotten that couple times in the last week over in the Cebu City area as I've been looking for houses. And, uh, and once they see the foreigner, I think the price has doubled in the two instances that I'm thinking about. Thank you for watching. Please like the video, share the video, and subscribe. Safe travels to you all wherever you're at, and we'll see you next time.